Well, ceremony. We will be hosting a short celebration for our scholars, hosted by Vice Chancellor Stephen Marston. Hi. And at that point, I would like to ask the scholars to pose for a short photo with Clint, our photographer, and there will be a group photograph after the event. At this point, I would like to say welcome, enjoy, and it's great to see so many of you here on such a sunny, beautiful evening in Cheltenham. I'm delighted to hand over to our Pro Vice Chancellor, Matthew Andrews. Thank you, Christy. And I really just want to add my welcome today. It's, it's fantastic to see you here on such beautiful weather, making the most of this wonderful campus that we have. Um, you make a fantastic contribution to the university, and I am really pleased that internationalisation is part of my, my portfolio. I look forward to talking with you. I'll be hanging around. So that's all I'm going to say. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And I'm going to hand over now to Stephen Marston, Vice-Chancellor. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much indeed for coming today. Um, it's a huge pleasure to be able to have this International Students' Reception here uh, on the campus on such a great day. I don't know what your image was of the university when you were first trawling websites, but this is probably... Cheltenham and England at its best, so I think you've, you've managed to come on a, on a, on a great day uh, and I hope you're really enjoying it. Um, really I just wanted to uh, say congratulations and, and a big thank you to all of you as our international students. Um, we're expecting about 90 of our international students hopefully to, to attend today from 20 countries around the world. Um, and it's an opportunity on behalf of the university just to to say thank you to all of you for the contribution that you, you make to the university. Firstly, thank you for choosing us. Um, I'm very conscious that all of you as international students um, will have had many, many choices that you could have made. Uh, I'm sure you spent quite a lot of time trawling websites of universities all around the world uh, before deciding where you really wanted to go. And you chose us and we're very conscious that that puts a particular responsibility on us uh, to repay your hopes and your ambitions and your dreams when you first decided, right, well, I'll go to University of Gloucestershire. Um, thank you for, for, for putting that confidence in us. We were pleased recently to get the results of a survey of international students. It's called the International Student Barometer. It collected the views of uh, over 90,000 students, international students around the world, attending 96 different universities, including 17 in the UK. And we were really pleased with the results um, because our students who voted in that survey uh, ranked us fourth in the UK and amongst the top 15 uh, universities in the world in the survey in terms of overall satisfaction for our international students and for the quality of the learning experience that we offer. So I hope that also uh, represents and reflects your experience here, that you too are uh, enjoying your time here. And very happy. I'd kind of also like to say thank you for your courage, which may sound like a rather odd word to use, but even in normal pre-COVID times, the decision to apply to go to university in another country is, I think, a brave thing to do. Uh, most of us choose to go to university in our own country, but, but you didn't. Uh, you chose to uh, go to a different country for your university education. And that carries with it a whole bundle of further stress and change and challenge to decide to go to university in another country. You're leaving everything that's familiar to you in your family, culture, society, in language in many cases. And as well as settling into a new university, which is stressful enough in its own right, you're finding your way around a new city, a new country, a new culture, having to do so very often in a new language. I think that's brave. I really think that's brave for all of you to have made that decision uh, that you wanted to go off and, and do that. So congratulations. And of course, the COVID pandemic made all of that uh, even more complicated than it would be in normal circumstances. Um, we're very conscious here that getting a visa to come to the UK uh, is quite a challenge at the best of times. But when you combine that with 
PCR tests and LFD tests and passenger locator forms and PP2 face masks, cancellation of flights, closure of borders, everything else that COVID has thrown at us. Um, it all kind of added to the challenge that, that you were facing and the challenge that you rose to. And then, of course, you were, many of you will have been facing particular stresses and anxieties and strains about your own family and your own friends back home and what was happening to them as a result of the pandemic. Again, I just wanted to say congratulations. I, I think you have done something remarkable here, uh, really, in terms of your your courage and your commitment in these particular circumstances of COVID uh, to still decide to go ahead, uh, apply to study internationally and, and come to this country and this university. I also feel that you, know, you, you are exemplars of something that is really important in the sense that what COVID has done in many cases is shrink the world. We've all retreated behind our own national boundaries. Uh, quite a lot of countries for quite a long time said, right, no one can come in. It's, it's fragmented us. It's made us sort of close in uh, in our own societies and our own countries. And all of that, I think, is a huge shame. And as we come out of COVID and lockdown, we're going to have to regain those habits of wanting to get out to understand the rest of the world, wanting to see the rest of the world, to learn from others, to meet others, to develop new connections and partnerships and friendships and understanding around the world. You are a hugely important group of people because you're still doing that. And we will have to relearn some of these habits, I think, as we come out of COVID to understand the, the pleasure as well as the challenge, the rewards of wanting to go out beyond our own national boundaries and our own cultures and our own ways of doing things and immerse yourself in something different to, to make new friends, new partnerships, new connections for your own understanding. So I, I think all of you are doing something really important that is an exemplar to all of us. So thank you. Um, one feature of today's event, uh, looking particularly to the group of uh, students out in the chairs, um, is that we are going to award certificates to our international scholarship students. So at this point, um, I'd like to say to our international scholarship students, uh, firstly, congratulations, and we'll now move on to the award of the certificate. Um, everybody else, you are most welcome to uh, continue to join in this part of the ceremony, uh, but if actually you would rather go off and socialise and network, have another drink uh, in the sunshine, then please do feel able to do that as well. Uh, but now we'll go on uh, to present the certificates to all of our international scholars. So thank you to everybody, and now if I can uh, move on to uh, this particular group. All of our international scholarship students, we've got 35 scholars this evening, plus three students from uh, two of our overseas progression partners, uh, IACT in Malaysia and Hubbard College in Canada. Our international scholarships are awarded to those students who have demonstrated excellence and impressed the awards panel, uh, whether that be through your academic achievement, your creative endeavors, or having contributed in some other way to your subject field or community overseas. Now, the way this is going to work is that over here, Carla has a number of framed certificates. We're going to, I'm going to present the certificates to each scholar in order, going A to Z by surname. So when you're called, uh, please do come up uh, here so that I can give you your certificate and we can take a photo. The logistics of taking the photo are that we stand over here so that we don't have the photos cluttered up with that and uh, we will then have the photo taken. Um, we're going to do the same thing as we did in graduations, that conscious that um, in COVID times many people think it's not a terribly good idea to shake hands a lot. 
Um, we will not shake hands, but we will bow if you would like to bow. <laughs> that, that's what we'll do. Uh, hopefully, that will that will work for you uh, and reduce any worries uh, about uh, transmission. Once all of the certificates have been presented, uh, we're then going to take some group photos of all of the scholarship winners uh, together with our wonderful academic staff from the university. So that's the plan. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, let's, uh, let's move on then to the presentation of the certificates.